Do you suffer pain from movie plot holes related to how space travel occurs way faster on screen than technology allows? Does it bother you when movies have spaceships go from one destination to another, when you know darn well that the laws of physics would rip the ship and its inhabitants apart if that happened in reality? Well, you may benefit from a dose of more science. Side effects include knowledge of planet sizes, distances between galaxies, and a possible salty taste in your mouth when watching Han Solo claim that the Millennium Falcon is the fastest ship in the galaxy and its hyperdrive engine can make the castle run in 12 parsecs. Or maybe watching Scotty push the Starship Enterprise's warp nacelles to their maximum to escape a Klingon entanglement. Space at times may feel vast and empty, but is filled with galaxies, stars, planets, comets, and more. With a concept as mysterious as space, it's hard to really relate to how large and far away planets or galaxies are from each other. Shoot, sometimes it's hard to relate just how far away things are here on Earth. Even so, let's start with Earth since we know the best. If you were to tie a belt around the Earth's equator, you'd measure a distance of 24,901 miles. To get to the moon, you'd have to lay 10 of those equator belts out. Or if you woke up feeling like Matt Damon, you could consider visiting our closest neighbor, Mars. But this can be tricky. The distance between planets changes because all of these targets are constantly moving around the sun. At the closest, Mars is 34 million miles away. That means that you would stretch that Earth equator belt over 1,300 times just to reach it. In relative terms, if the distance between Earth and the Moon was like traveling one city block, then going from the Earth to Mars is like traveling from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Using that same analogy, traveling to Jupiter is like traveling from Los Angeles to Portland, Maine. Let's stretch this to the farthest acknowledged planet in our solar system, Neptune. The distance between Earth and Neptune at its closest is 2.7 billion miles. Using the same analogy, that is the distance covered by traveling from Los Angeles all the way around the world back to Los Angeles 10 times over. That's quite the distance and yet we haven't covered much ground on the cosmic scale. I'm gonna get a lot of frequent flyer miles. Let's look outside of our solar system. Many movies and shows hop from planet to planet that are light years apart. Fictional inventions such as the warp drive in Star Trek and the hyperdrive in Star Wars allow the characters to get there within the time frame of a movie or episode of a show because there's still an art to balancing storytelling with cold hard facts. I mean, how can you keep a series going if you take into account the relativistic effects of time slowing down as a ship travels faster while the less speedy person at the destination continues to get older faster than you? There are movies such as the Alien series or Passengers that use cryo-freezing as a way to travel long distances while knowing that it will take years and even up to a full lifetime to cover that distance. Well, ignoring the whole time dilation twin paradox effect, you may be wondering, how far apart are galaxies in reality and is it possible to travel there that fast and arrive in one piece? Let's look at our nearest galaxy. We live in the Milky Way galaxy and we are one of 54 galaxies and dwarf galaxies called the local group. We think of Andromeda as the closest galaxy to us, but in reality, it is the closest spiral galaxy to us. The closest known galaxy to the Milky Way is the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. Yeah, that's a galaxy. This dwarf galaxy is about 42,000 light years from the galactic center of our own Milky Way and 25,000 light years from our solar system. That means our own solar system is closer to this dwarf galaxy than the center of our own galaxy, which is 30,000 light years away. Who would have thought? Let's say we wanted to travel to the closest exoplanet to us, located in Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away, or 25 trillion miles. How long would it take using the technology that we have now? How long would it take at the speed of light? And what would happen to our bodies if we traveled close to the speed of light? There are several methods to propel satellites into space and beyond our solar system. There are conventional rockets that use propellants such as hydrazine and other oxidizers, and ion propulsion rockets. Using conventional rockets, you can get a spacecraft going around 36,000 miles per hour, or 0.005% the speed of light. Voyager 1 and 2 are great examples of spacecraft that use conventional rockets to traverse outer space. They are the farthest man-made objects that exist, period. At Voyager's average speed of 36,000 miles per hour, it would take over 79,000 years to make it to our next closest exoplanet. 
Let's say we got our hands on some Star Wars tech and were able to travel at the speed of light. Even at that speed, it would take 4.2 years to get to the nearest exoplanet. The next logical question is, couldn't we just work on speeding our ships up? Well, not so fast. <laughs> Bad joke. Even if we could ignore pesky things like relativity, let's not forget the effect that traveling at those speeds would have on the human body. A 2012 publication in Nature Science explored this very question and ultimately concluded that relativistic spaceflight would be fatal to the spaceship's instruments and most importantly to the passengers. Now just to unpack this a little further, we're not talking about death due to the sheer speed. As the speed of the spaceship approaches the speed of light, the ship would be hitting the hydrogen that exists naturally in space, which turns into intense radiation as you accelerate. This radiation would destroy the electronics on board and kill the humans. All of that radioactive energy needs to go somewhere, and this turns into heat. If you were to slow the ship down to half of the speed of light to thwart the hydrogen irradiation, then you only have a time dilation factor of about 15%, which means you'd be dead and gone before you get to your destination. Assuming you survived the intense radiation, heat, and the ship didn't explode from the same factors. Easy. The hyperdrive in Star Wars is less hard science fiction and more like space fantasy, since the movies don't really get into the science. They rely on traveling close to, or many times faster than the speed of light, to get halfway across the galaxy in a matter of hours. Assuming a galaxy size similar to our own, which is approximately 100,000 light years across, to cover half of that distance in one hour, you would need to be traveling over 438 million times the speed of light. This is literally impossible using current methods of travel. Ah! So we know that hyperdrive cannot be real with our level of understanding to date. Are there any movies and shows that get it right? Yes. Contact does a great job at completely avoiding using light speed engines to travel large distances by taking advantage of wormholes. A wormhole, also known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge, is a theoretical passage or tunnel supported by Einstein's general theory of relativity that connects points in space-time. With wormholes, you don't have to worry about cosmic scale inaccuracies if you're getting from point A to point B in a flash. Contact also stemmed from the mind of a brilliant scientist with a significant understanding of the laws of physics. So the science is pretty solid for a fictional movie. Looks like you can meet halfway between storytelling and maintaining scientific accuracy on the cosmic scales. Now that you've had a refresher of cosmic scales and the realities of traveling long distances within short periods of time, you may discover even more plot holes in your favorite movies and TV shows. There is a way to meet halfway in storytelling and physics, even with a higher dose of knowledge, because space! Now let's hyperdrive out of here. Oh no! This is gonna rip me to shreds! Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of Because Space. Make sure to like, subscribe to this channel, and hit the little bell in the corner to get notified whenever there's a new episode of Because Science, Because Space, or when we go live with the show.